Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be on how I pass the CCRN. If you guys are interested, let's get into the nitty gritty. Any of you who's been following my videos for a bit knows that I've been studying for the CCRN neonatal examination and I took it recently and I passed. Super excited about that. I have a weight lifted off my shoulders, but now I want to give you tips that help me pass. Maybe it will help you pass. So I did take it specifically for the neonatal um, critical care exam. So if you're planning on doing it for adults or pediatrics, my bad. I don't have the tips for you, but maybe I do. <laughs> All right. So first things first, what I did was I went to the Academy, American Academy of Critical Care. AACN.org. Um, I went there and I made a membership. Um, my my hospital gives you points for being a member of certain nursing organizations. So I was like, whatever, I could definitely use this anyway. So um, I became a member because once you become a member, when you go to sign up for the test, it's cheaper. Not that it matters. Some people do get reimbursed um, from your hospital if you pass it, but but sometimes there's a little little asterisk that makes sure that they won't reimburse you if you don't pass on the first try. Disrespectful, I know. But anyway, neither here nor there. So I, my plan was to get a cheaper test because I, I don't know, I was planning for the worst. Anywho, um, so first you make the membership and then what I did was through the same website they have PowerPoints for, you know, like let's say it's adults. They have the adult sections, like all the different, like there's an outline for the test and they have sections, PowerPoints that are, um, what's the word I want to use? This one, dictated. So they have dictated PowerPoints. It's kind of like if you're sitting in an online class. So what I did was I purchased that. So I paid for the membership. I paid for the dictated PowerPoints and I paid for the test. Pretty penny. It was, it was, wasn't cheap, but you got to put money in if you want to get money back. I don't know what the saying. <laughs> Think of me. So um, I did those dictated PowerPoints for about a month and it was just straight content. You know, it was like, I gotta be honest with you. I feel like if you're going to get into a critical care, hear me out, hear me out. Many people are going to be like, whoa, what do you mean? I think if you're getting into a critical care, let's say you're a new grad and you get into an ICU right off the bat, good for you. But I think you should start studying for the CCRN the moment you start. And here's why. Because while I was studying for this test, I mean, granted, this is knowledge that I've, I've been experiencing in practice, but it was like so much more to it. Like I understood everything in a different way, like a more well-rounded way. Like I honestly wish I would have been studying for that when I started working where I was working because then I would have had a better understanding of what it was that I was doing and a better understanding so I could teach the parents exactly what's going on so that way they could be in the loop as well. I thought it was amazing information. I actually found a lot of joy in it, as nerdy as that sounds, in studying for this test. So that's why I say that. Like if you are studying or if you're starting in an ICU, it's kind of scary because it's like it's stuff you don't know necessarily because granted you are experiencing things in nursing school and you're exposed to some things in the like actual lecture but it's it's a totally different like animal once you're in ICU so I got to say that studying for the CCRN the moment that you start working is probably beneficial for you only so that you're you know you have the knowledge behind your practice. Um, anyway, so I did a month of content. It was a lot, like a lot of material. I would make sure that on my days off, it was literally content, 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 PowerPoints, PowerPoints, PowerPoints. And it was great because they were dictated. Like I said, it felt like an online class and I've done online classes before and I'm very diligent on that. So then 
I did that and then my plan was once I finished the content to just put the content aside this is stuff I do every day so I shouldn't need to review it multiple times um, so what I wanted to do from there was just questions I did take some time off I did have some issues going on in my life so once I got back into it it was just straight questions 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 the questions I got them from Evolve. I, I know that a lot of nursing schools use Evolve, but if you go to Evolve and make yourself an account, evolve.elsevier.com, you can buy the test, like it's a question book. It's kind of like just practice questions. And they have it like study mode or exam mode. So study mode, you would get the, you would do the answer. And submit and they'll tell you right off the bat like if you're right or wrong with a rationale or you could do exam mode which I've never done I'm pretty sure it's just a whole bunch of questions with rationales at the end I personally feel like that's just too much information all at once it's better to just go question by question so I had it was 600 questions so I just gave myself like 50 questions a day and just keep doing them keep doing them keep doing them and then I set myself a date and with that date, I had more like oomph to get forward because I took, you know, at least two months off of studying from like because the holidays and things going on. So I was like, all right, I can't keep making excuses. 2020 is going to be my year. So I got to get this done. And I'm like, man, January is already going to come to a close soon. So I want to get this done before February kind of thing. Um, so anyway, so when it came to taking the test, like I said, I did a month of content and about a month of questions. Um, I, I felt like I wasn't ready because I was still getting a bunch of questions wrong when I was doing the practice questions. But I said, you know what, I, I'm going to have to do it anyway. And if I fail it, at least I'll get a better understanding of it when I do it the second time. So as I'm taking this test, I'm literally like, I know nothing. <laughs> I... I'm a fool. I don't know why I signed up for this so soon. I've only been in critical care for a year and a half. Like, it's just, like, I, I was in over my head. That's, how, that's like every question I was like, next. Oh my God, here we go. Another one that I don't know. So it was, it felt overwhelming, but it wasn't that I didn't know because it was like a question that I understood, but it was asking, like, the response weren't what I expected. So I was like, guessing at that point because I didn't feel like the responses were what I would have answered. I don't know how to explain it, but it just, it, it was hard. It was really, really hard. And like, I mean, it was 150 questions in a span of three hours. I didn't take the full three hours. I've never been one to take that long to test. But like when it got to a point where I was just like, all right, I just want to know how bad I failed so that I can redo this again and do better. So I was like, I marked the ones that I wanted to review later. So then I, I changed a few answers and I just said, you know what, that's it. It is what it is. And I hit submit. And then obviously I had to wait, you know, once I finished for the printout and the girl gives it to me and she's like, congratulations. And I was like, congratulations. What do you mean? Like, there's no way I passed that test. And truthfully I did. So I gotta say, you're gonna feel like a fish out of water in that exam, and that's probably normal. But no, I don't think even as much as you study, it, it will feel comfortable. I, I don't know, I just feel like it's just so much content that can be put in that test that you never know, you never know. And it depends too, like what kind of patients you're used to getting. Like if you don't normally get, you know, patients with strange anomalies, and then they throw that at you in the test, you're gonna be like, I don't see so much of this genetic, you know, these this issues in adults or in pediatrics. So it was just like, never heard of this, you know, but it's, it's something that, that I feel like it can be done. Anyone can do it. You just have to put the time. You really have to put the time. And like I said, I feel like once you get into ICU, I feel like you should start studying. That way you'll have a better understanding and you can use it in your practice. And it's like, it's material that, that you can use in the future. Let's say it's some sort of antidote for a drug, you know, like I experienced that 
in real life. So now it's like I know what an antidote for a drug is if I need to give it. I don't know. It's pretty cool to be able to use that knowledge in practice because it's like think about algebra. Like when was the last time really that you used algebra? You're not. So it's pretty cool that you're actually using knowledge that is important to your practice. Anyway, that's all I have to say for this video. I hope um, I'll, I'll, I'll put in the description box the links to the websites that I use. Um, there are other examinations that you can use. I know RNC. I've heard of those. Uh, you could do that. I just felt more particular to CCRN, but I think either one is fine. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope it helped. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye!